What is happening, people? Welcome back to the Uproar Podcast. Today I'm joined by the boys from Lootbox TV. What's happening, fellas? Thank you for joining. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you uh, interviewing us. Definitely, man. So we got we got Juice and Andrew here. They are uh, a duo that runs the YouTube channel Lootbox TV, who specialize in some Pokemon trading card action, which is which is an interesting topic. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially right now, the oh, yeah. increases are insane. Bro, now is the time. <laughs> now is the time for collectors. I don't know what happened recently. There's been like. A crazy spike in value for like everything trading card related essentially but like pokemon has seen like a wild uptick which is just fantastic yeah i uh i definitely think it has to do with what's going on in the world but not because people are getting extra money from the government i think yeah. it's because there's you know people late 20s early 30s that grew up with a lot of this stuff that have a ton of disposable income. They can't go to the bar. They can't go out and travel. They can't go to Vegas for a weekend. They can't go to Atlantic City. Whatever it may be, whatever their destination may be. So they have all this money. So then, you know, they start buying, right? They they start getting their hobby, something that, you know, makes them feel good. And the nostalgia. True. That nostalgia know. is a fucking hell of yeah. a drug, man. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think that's playing like the biggest role in it right now. And it'll be interesting to see who sticks with it as things open up more. Like get back to normal, and then I, I I think you'll see some prices, especially for modern, bottom out. But yeah. I think that Watsy stuff, it's been going ham, and I don't think it's really gonna drop too much. Yeah, man, I agree. And it's it's an interesting kind of thing though, because like at the moment, it's like a lot of people that are still able to work. Like if you're still able to go into the office, or even if you're just working from home, like you still have the same income. But then, you know, you're not spending. So it's like you said, like, people aren't traveling. People aren't going out and, like, spending as much as they normally do. Which then is resulting in people going crazy online, which is, it, it's interesting. But then on the, on the other hand, there's also people who are, like, struggling at the moment. Which is, like, it, it's really tough for people who are, like, not able to afford their rents. Because the, uh, like, the stimulus is now, they're not getting, like, the extra 600 a month or whatever it was for, like, unemployment right. checks, which is, it's wild, man. It's a crazy time we're living in these days, bro. Absolutely. Hey, man, I'm guilty of uh, being at work and uh, perusing uh, fa uh, eBay and uh, <laughs> seeing what, what uh, I can pick up, sports card related or Pokemon related, trying to get deals. But, yeah, I mean, this, this explosion in price, I mean, you know, Back when, when I started getting into it, you know, people would hit me up on Instagram, you know, around like January, like, hey, I, I have a case fresh, you know, base set box for 3300 3500 And I was thinking like, uh, it's kind of pricey, you <laughs> know, I'll pass. And then, oh you know, now, like, it's like 10000 is like the cheapest you can find. And yeah, you get one for 10 k like you got a good deal. Yeah, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Dude, I've, been, I've been really excited to talk to you guys. Like, I've been kind of going back and forth with Juice a little bit. Because, so, I'll kind of go into a little bit of backstory on... So, I've been watching your guys' videos for a while. Like, I, for some reason... I'm, like, addicted to watching, like, opening videos for whatever reason. <laughs> and, so, you guys are kind of a newer channel. You've been you've been going for, like, over a year. Like, about over a year, right? Yeah, we just hit our year, like, I want to say maybe three weeks ago. Nice, man. Yeah, you guys are you guys are killing it for being in the game for not so long but yeah so i've, I've been <laughs> i've been going crazy just like watching i especially just like to watch like the um the old vintage which is wizards of the coast kind of yeah. stuff which you guys obviously because yeah, that's more of like our childhood yeah uh, stuff yeah exactly that we remember yeah for our for our age group it's definitely that shit is insane for me to watch and i have like a backstory i have like kind of a history in collecting and opening booster boxes as well. Like I had a secondary channel where I used to uh, just buy in and then open random booster boxes. And like, I, ha I still have all of the cards. It's funny, I actually have a bunch of them sitting on my desk that I wanted to send off to get graded. But not a lot of people know that I've been like so like, not like crazy into Pokemon cards, but I was like, I always had like a fascination with it. But now that like, I realize how much all this crap is worth, like it's been super interesting to me so it's just like kind of amplified it especially with all the free time not being able to do anything i'm just like out here checking out prices and stuff but <laughs> <laughs> it's wild man because i like this was man i'm actually gonna go onto this channel it's i had this youtube channel it's youtube.com slash mewtwo where i uploaded some unboxing videos of just like random booster boxes and at the time i got these for like 
Dude, okay, so I got a base set booster box opening. This was seven years ago. So seven years ago, I got a base set box for 400 bucks. And then that kind of like sparked my interest. I was like, all right, this is kind of fun. And it's like not that bad. This was when I was in like, I was probably sent somewhere in high school and I was just making like YouTube money. So I was like, fuck it. I don't have any bills to pay. So I was just like buying mad booster boxes. I got, I had oh, yeah. probably like six or seven of them. I had fossil, jungle. I got a base set, base set two. I did a legendary collection. So I had all of these sealed boxes that I got for... Like the most expensive one I think I had was the um, the base set one, which I think was like I got for like four fifty or something like that. Which my parents were like, "What are you doing buying Pokemon cards, man? That's too much money." But now, thinking about all of the money I could have had if I just kept those things sealed in my parents' basement, like my god. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. We try not to think about that because when we look back at the early stuff that we opened on the channel, we're like, <laughs> "Oh, if we had just kept those sealed, we'd be oh, like dude. a lot of money." But you know, we but you know we did it because we wanted to open it. We we enjoyed the opening, the hunts, yeah, yeah. the chase. Yeah, exactly. So well, we were gonna we were gonna collect anyway. So it's like you might as well record it. Like I have a little, I have a like this, like Walmart shopping bag. Like you know the cloth ones that you get for like a nickel, and they give you a <laughs> discount for getting them instead of using the plastic bags. Yep. So I have one of those filled with nothing but Wizards of the Coast packs that we open up over time and we, i was just looking at it over over you know the just past like the wrappers yeah and it's like within that little bag if we kept everything sealed there was easily about a hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of product just chilling oh in there. my god dude <laughs> it is insane like i had a small collection compared to like a lot of people but like even then i could have like there's legendary collection i think that booster box sells for like I don't even remember <laughs> what it is. That it's like an absurd uh, amount, right? It's like over fifteen thousand. Yeah, or, 50, uh, let's just call it that. Fifteen thousand right now. I think it might be a little bit more. Dude, that is absolutely mind blowing. Like I watch these videos like back on my channel. I was using like a terrible camera. I'm filming it like on my bed, and I'm just like throwing these packs around, ripping them open. I'm like, oh, that's hollow, and I just like set it off to the side. Like don't even sleeve it right away. I'm like cringing watching this shit. But yeah, I, <laughs> I pulled it up actually. You got some skills on your snow or your uh, yeah snowboard. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is like my secondary channel. I was just uploading like <laughs> random things at the time, which is hilarious. It's funny to go back and watch this stuff. Like, gives me like crazy like nostalgia trip. But um, yeah, man, I I actually so recently knowing all of these boxes that I've opened. Like every time I go back to my parents' house, I have all this in like my um my parents' garage. So I like always go back and like look at. I still have all of the booster boxes, obviously. Like um opened and just kind of like all of the cards or at least the the regular non hollows yeah. are just chilling inside the, the boxes but like last time i went home i um i had a binder where i just kind of had like all of the hollows so like now i have a stack like i actually have them on my desk because i went through and sorted them now i have like 85 like pack fresh holographic cards that i'm like damn these things oh, like I, I lost a ton of money on opening those boxes but like these things are definitely they're up there in value still so at least i didn't lose everything you know that's well don't i wouldn't look at it like that and that's what a lot of people do right now they like oh no like you open up a box you gotta think too like if those cards come back like a nines or tens like comparing the value then of a great nine or ten to comparing it now you're still like getting three four hundred percent of your actual money back like that is true you're, that is true you're, you're gonna be you're gonna be so you're gonna be like perfect obviously it would have been nice to keep the box sealed and so forth but i mean a lot of this stuff's meant to be open and it's funny because both andrew and i our personalities are, are a tad bit different and i think that's what makes us like a good dynamic duo like, <laughs> definitely i i can't sh sit on anything sealed like i like all like i'm turning around i'm looking at booster boxes that we open up on the channel and it's like all my booster boxes open but then andrew's the sealed collector so he's got fantastic booster boxes <laughs> that are sealed and it's it's fantastic but it's like to me it's like all right you have these boxes like it, it, it's just like you know that nostalgia that, that that feeling it's such a high of like forgetting about all the problems of the world opening up packs and just getting so excited to pull like an amazing card like i see one of your videos where you pulled the first edition magneton if that comes back at 10 now like just thinking about it no oh, i like, know that, i'm looking at that thing right now it's got hella print lines and i'm bummed out i actually have two of them. Oh, no. oh no dude i had two rocket first edition boxes i had two oh, of them so i got, wow. I got i actually got two first edition dark charizards hollows 
that I got oh. graded. One came back a nine and one's a 10. So like, I mean, just that 10 is way more than I paid for both of those boxes. So like, which, right, is, right, which right. is crazy. But so like my chat, like my, my audience is obviously a little bit different than like the, the trading card side of the old sure. YouTube. But so like, essentially when you say, um, so Wizards of the Coast is the company that like Pokemon outsourced originally um, in the early days to to print the trading card game. And so like they were, honestly, I, I love the Wizards of the Coast, obviously just because of nostalgia, but like, bro, there's like something different about these cards. Like the, the card stock is like better. That's, like, I don't yeah. know what's up with it, man. So that's the big difference. A lot of people uh, don't realize they tend to get the, the story mix. But all the artwork was already created in the Japanese side. When they came and imported it, they put it on that cardstock, that thick cardstock. Mm -hmm. it, it made the colors pop more, the holographics pop more, uh, the foiling and the and the actual foil that they use and the swirls. That's what made those cards stand out even more. The artwork yeah. themselves, the beautiful artwork, they imported that. But the actual cardstock, that's what separated them. That's what really gave it. Like it, it just felt like. For being a piece of cardboard it felt you felt the quality and, and that's what's missing I, I think that's what missing today and that's what was uh missing in the japanese cards like you yeah. pick up like i i have right now in my hand a pocket monsters japanese card and it just feels so flimsy it, it just feels like i can bend it easily if i wanted to i'm not going to but if i <laughs> wanted to i could but it, like i go to pick up a wizard of the coast card and it just like you just feel the quality this feels you know better it really does it's like a lot thicker like i like opening and like seeing all the new the new cards obviously but there's like something about the simplicity of the old cards and just like the quality that like makes it so much better like i don't know it's it's kind of like when i look at magic and how magic has has evolved over the history you know back when when you know i didn't play the the card game Pokemon back when I was you know in 1998 1999 I was yeah. more of Magic but I knew of the you know animation and stuff like that and so you know but looking back on it now you know it's it was a lot simpler back then now it's like more complicated there's you know all of these other you know nuances to the game and so you know it's just I, I just like going back to that simplicity of you know just putting an energy on the you know on the card and putting two or three and then attacking and you know the moves were simple there was no complicated yeah. stuff yeah, and man. so that kind of just brings you back to that simple childhood definitely something beautiful about the simplicity like now they got all of the different gimmicks they had like level x and ex and now they got like the v max or whatever there's all this crazy and the cards like the artwork on the new cards is super cool like i, I like it obviously you got to appreciate it but there's just yep. something about just like the standard like windows 98 looking ass graphics they had on these original cards <laughs> <laughs> well one of the bigger one of the bigger concerns that i have is they made two like, they made too many rarities so now you have yeah. rare you have ultra rare secret rare gold cards like you have it all and back then you just had a holographic right that is true and that that holographic was a holy like if you got a holographic impact you made that made your day that made your month depending on the card right <laughs> True. nowadays you get a holographic and you're like really yeah you get, get like a, a holographic you legendary and it's like not even worth anything like sleep right you're, you're, more, more, you're more you're more concerned about getting that rainbow rare the secret <laughs> rare the full art the yeah. the gold card or whatever but yeah which is cool then, getting I mean, that hollow yeah it's just, always nice to have like those chase cards like you get like the rainbow yeah. rare charizard and you're always stoked but sure yeah yeah, man. So, I mean, I was also going to explain to people who are unaware. So when we talk about getting cards graded, there's there's a couple different options when it comes to it. I think PSA is generally the most widely accepted. It's professional they're sports for, authenticators, right? Yeah, they're number one for Pokemon when it comes to popularity. Yeah. So essentially, you send your cards in. It's like, depending on the value of the card, it's like around like 20, 25 bucks or something like that to get a card graded. But then... Um, if it comes back as like a gem mint 10, that means your card is essentially flawless. Like there's nothing, no defects at all, like no scratches whatsoever. Even like the smallest little like white nick will, will set you back. And that's kind of like the standard in terms of getting your cards to be worth more. I'm sure there's some people listening to this that are like, dude, I have, I have some Pokemon cards back 
and my parents' house that I'm going to go look at now. Because <laughs> And every time my friends mention that, they're like, dude, I had like a whole binder of those. And I'm like, let me see them because you could have like a shadowless holographic that if it's in not bad condition, like it could be worth a lot of money. Not a lot, not a lot of people even know that like shadowless exists or any of the type of variations that oh. would make them more valuable, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like there's a, just a ton, ton of different things. Like I, there's probably even people sitting on like random errors that error cards that could be worth a lot of money that are just collecting dust. It's, it's disgusting. I mean, there's so many people like you can, there's so many stories of people just going to yard sales and they find first edition shadowless cards and they're like, Oh, here you can have this entire binder full of like 300 cards for 20 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. If you find man. someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, you could get yourself, get yourself a screaming deal. Oh yeah, for sure. Did you guys did you guys ever actually play the card game like as a kid or now? I, I did as a kid. Uh, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, there was a, like a there was Metro Mall back in the day when I was a kid, and they had Pokemon tournaments there. And uh, my mom used to take me, and I used to have my deck, and we used to go play uh, in a couple of Pokemon tournaments. I never I didn't play for long. Um, it was kind of weird. It, it, if you look at the early history of Pokemon. When Pokemon first came out in '99, uh, with the you know blast of popularity, yeah, uh, early 2000s, Pokemon was you know doing well. Then Pokemon hit a, a, a uh, kind of like a a wall, and it started decreasing right around the time when my gener like my generation, my age, I'm 33, mm -hmm. so it, right when we got to high school in like early 2000s. Pokemon kind of took a dive and, and they switched over at that time and started making the cards themselves and that whole EX era from like you know 2004 to 2000 in like 7, 8 really took a drop off and a lot of people weren't playing around that time so that's kind of when I stopped completely. Yeah it seems and, like that's when a lot of people stopped. Oh yeah and now those those cards you want to talk about those are not even Wizard of the Coast those cards you get gold stars man oh man yeah, see, what's those wild cards. about the value of those cards, it's, it's a lot more crazy because the population was way less. Like, they weren't feeling as much of a demand, so there's, like, way less of it printed, which then in turn makes them, like, more valuable now, which is which is wild. Like, yeah. I never knew, because, like, Sky Ridge is one of the more, like, expensive sets out there just because I feel like there's less, like, less yeah. product out there. Is that probably it? So Sky Ridge was the last booster box, I guess, the last set to be printed by Wizard of the Coast. Yeah and it was they started printing it and then they had this whole back and forth with pokemon and then when pokemon took the license back they're like all right we're not going to print this anymore and they just stopped printing it there's also there's rumors that there was uh another legendary collections box legendary collection 2 was supposed to come out that mm -hmm. never did there was a there was two total sets that were supposed to come out after sky ridge that never came out because of pokemon pulling back damn there's like some blueprint somewhere that someone's got their hands on yeah, yeah so i've got like a demo like a test set yeah somewhere. <laughs> probably worth like millions that's wild probably i've heard TCA gaming. <laughs> yeah for real i love tca gaming's videos too oh, he's awesome. i gotta try to get that guy in here sometime he's he's just so like he's just super knowledgeable with it and he's not like over the top like like you guys are also great because you're not like super crazy with it and obviously like it comes to personal taste when you watch someone like i don't know they, with don't like anybody going like all crazy about it but you guys just seem like sure. super chill guys so i was like all right i'll just binge watch about a thousand of these videos tonight <laughs> <laughs> which i definitely have i pretty much have watched probably all of your guys is like vintage vintage uploads <laughs> That's but so awesome. you know it's crazy i wonder what happened with wizards of the coast and how they ended up losing their license or like there, there must have just been some type of dispute that happened and they're like pokemon was like we're cutting your ass off uh, I don't know for sure. I think it was just a, a, a money standpoint from Pokemon. Uh, I think they felt like they could possibly make the cards better. Um, yeah. Or do it, or do it themselves, and, yeah. and it'd be a lot cheaper to rather than outsource it. Makes sense. I mean, Pokemon even now is is the biggest media franchise in the world. So they're like, why are we, why aren't we making all this all this money to be made? You know. <laughs> Which is wild. I mean, it makes it like it's crazy because Wizard of the Coast, like, so they're the Magic, the Gathering, like they had, they were the the card game guys, which mm -hmm. is which is insane. I've always wanted to know like the process. Like I've seen, I've heard stories of people that have been in contact with employees that worked for Wizards, which would be just like super interesting to like talk to them because like I've heard stories like they they were allowed to take like one box of product like a like one like a year like something like that. 
So like some of those dudes are set up for like for li- like their retirement plan is literally if it depends on if they kept like a first edition box. Like. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, like, in 2017, Pokemon was really cheap as well. Yeah. Um, but, like, right now, it, it's it's crazy. If they kept it, you're right. I mean, you talk about retirement, man. They could go buy an island. <laughs> For real. With, I mean, if they, all- if they kept, like, a, a freaking, like, a shipping box of those, like, first edition booster boxes, if they somehow just, like, wanted to buy Because it was, like, 100 bucks for a base set booster box first edition at the time i remember seeing like something on the website like they were giving one away they're like it's a hundred dollar value <laughs> and like oh my it, God. which is insane because a first edition base set booster box sells for like it wasn't like 70 grand or something like that right now uh first edition base set it booster might box even be more like it's more yeah it's really? close to maybe about one hundred and sixty thousand. what really I, 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 yeah, yeah it, it technically it probably is more it's I would say like 180, but like it depends, right? No one sold it for that much yet. Yeah. The last known box, I guess, from a box break that was sold was about ninety five, ninety thousand dollars somewhere around there. Because I remember Pokerev but, was doing one on he would, he did it live and he was talking to like, I mean this was a while ago, so it might have even been like. Hey, well, it was only like t- two months ago, and it was basically a hundred thousand then. Let's call it that for easy math. Jesus. And now. There's one. I think there was one listed, Andrew, for like one on eBay for one sixty or one eighty, oh, and then yeah, it was taken like down, and we believe that it had been sold. We actually inquired about it, and uh, they we offered a certain amount, and they turned us down and said they had paid more than that for it, and we didn't send a cheap offer either. Yeah. So <laughs> it was it was interesting. So you guys are you guys are nuts. Like even. Like, I feel like I have, like, a valuable collection, but then I think about dudes like you that are, like... I watched your Q&A video. You guys are talking about you, you've spent, like, over $100,000 on Pokemon cards easy, right? Uh, hey, between us both, it's probably closer yeah. to 200000 uh, I will give Andrew credit that uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it, you know, I would say it's probably maybe 60, 40 in the sense of what's on the, what's on the channel, but overall, Andrew's personal collection is take it off that guy Jesus. i'll let you step in andrew if you want to talk <laughs> yeah i mean you know i i've always been kind of like a sealed collector but also opening is also you know exciting to do of course. so you know back uh, back when we first started i i started to build you know a sealed uh booster pack collection so i do have one a sealed empire yeah like one of every art set pretty much of every set that's come out up until you mean booster the boxes or packs packs nice packs right now but it, it and then, that's how i started out and then i started to dev into other sealed products like theme decks and things like that and then that evolved into booster boxes and then so now i'm sitting on a nice collection of booster boxes of like legendary collections you know jungle fossil hell yeah um, man you know, EX Dragon, uh, you know, Aqua Magma, things like that, Expedition. So, you know, it's it's just kind of grown uh, into like a collecting and kind of an investing standpoint. And little did I know that, you know, we would see these astronomical prices, you know, a year after I started, you know, buying these things. I figured, you know, it'll go up a little bit every year, little bit by little bit. And then eventually, you know, I'll get to the point where it'll be a good enough price to sell. I just didn't expect this kind of massive explosion. Seriously, to- it's, it's hard to sell because, I mean, there has to be a roof to this. Like, it, it's not like there's no way it can, like, keep going up, like, at this rate, which is crazy. And it's like, yeah. I don't want to sell because... I mean, unless you like needed the money or something, it's 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 a, it's a weird. Well, you're you're also in an interesting position, and and a lot of and I get where a lot of the individuals are coming from. It's kind of what we stated earlier when we first started talking. But it, there's a lot of individuals that don't want to see the prices continue to go up because then you're putting them out of the hobby in the sense yep. of how they want to collect. That is um, very true. And, and then you do have all these individuals that are bringing a lot of money, and there's definitely some inflation going on for sure but you're gonna r- run into a situation where wizard of the coast like we have to like pokemon as a whole is doing fantastic but we have to separate the two wizard of the coast is on a whole different other level that stuff's never being printed again that stuff you know, like that stuff is going to be insanely expensive going forward no matter what you might see boxes drop a tad bit 
but you're never going to see if boxes are selling right now on eBay for a first edition team rocket box for $10,000, you're not going to see that box drop that much. Yeah, right? that's true. Because people that have money and they put that they they bought those boxes. They're not going to turn around and allow their investment to sink that much. Everybody has to get come to terms with that. And a lot of people aren't, and they're a little frustrated about it, which I, I get in a sense, but from the wizard of the coast yeah. standpoint, that stuff is going to continue to either rise or stay at a steady peak. Now, you do have their small percentage, right, that, that all this could drop. There could be an atomic drop. Oh, there's always that chance, you know. There is that chance. So, like, if you, you like, for instance, for, for you, you collected cards and you had them for such a long period of time. Now, if you get them graded, they're literally worth... 200 300 x like we were talking about more than what you paid mm -hmm. and if i was in your situation i personally would sell some of my my products if not majority of my products just so i can make sure i get part of that now unless you you don't like you said don't need money then sit on it and see what happens and take that risk of it potentially dropping but having this increase over the past like 60 days 90 days no other collectible hobby has gone through something like this and it's Absolutely. crazy, yeah. Pokemon's especially unique just because of the Wizard of the Coast shenanigans, yeah. where it's like it's guaranteed that nothing like this will ever kind of resurface. And every day, I mean, there's a booster box being opened that just puts, you know, that much less in, into population, which also then puts more of the cards into population. And as more people realize the value of cards, they're going to be more and more graded, which then will essentially kind of mess with the values of certain cards. Like if more and more people keep getting base or keep getting, uh, first edition rocket freaking charizards graded and more and more become tens that will mess with the value but it always will seem to steadily go up considering they'll never you know and see that's an interesting piece too so like i'm pulling up psa's website right now and for instance like the first thing that came up for me is fossil so if i look at the first edition dragon knight right mm -hmm. and a lot of people are saying oh the population you know of, of certain cards is something you have to look at too like people think like right now the first edition uh dragonite has a population of a psa 10 of 203 yeah so there's 203 total psa 10s like in the three world years. which is still yeah. a lot like three, uh, three not that much ago. exactly three years ago a lot of individuals a lot of hardcore collectors back then which i respect them back then thought that was so high that that's insanely high with the amount of people and amount of product that's being opened and more cards getting in the circulation, that 200 and what did I say? 203 number, that 203 number with more cards coming in circulation, that's dwindling. That's a small number yep. with all the Dragonites that have been pulled recently, right? Yeah, that is true. It, 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 the, I, I, I think there's going to be a huge increase of PSA cards. Now, that's just my opinion. I, I think PSA cards are very undervalued. Um, I, I think you're gonna you're starting to see them come around right now, but I think graded cards are super underrated right now. Yeah, I agree. And how do you guys feel about? Because I know that Beckett is probably like the second, the second one. Have you guys ever gotten anything graded by Beckett? I'm sure you have, but like, what do you? What is like kind of the differences that you think? Uh, I would say the case. I mean, it's not as flattering as a PSA case. Yeah, agreed. I know that they it's are thicker, like if you get a Beckett it's ten, bulkier. it's more valuable, right? The well, Beckett, they grade a little bit tougher, I think. And it's, it's kind of funny. So um, we don't want to steal anybody's thunder. So, I mean, people could do the research. But if you guys go down like an Instagram, like rabbit hole, there's a couple individuals out there that have been doing some tests. And the testing are, hey, you send this card into the PSA. And then you crack it open once you get it back and then send it into the Beckett. Yep. And see what gets a better grade. And believe it or not, the Becketts have been getting higher grades after they've been broken out of a case and sent to Beckett, right? So really? they've already been to PSA. So so say PSA grades at a 7, they're coming back from Beckett at 8.59. And hmm. you're like, wait a minute, what? So I, I think the only thing that Beckett has going for it, in my personal opinion, is black labels. I think yep. if you get a black label something, it's so damn hard to get a black label. That the black label means that it's, it's a 10 in all of the subgrades, correct? All the subgrades. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So Beckett is a little bit different in how they grade in that. Rather than just giving you an overall number, they 
they subgrade it. So like the corners would be a 9.5, the surface is a 10, and then it goes based off of like an average of that. So then you get that overall grade, but which I think is cool. Like I, I would like to see that because I got a first edition uh, Dark Dragonite back that's an 8.5 and it's literally, I can't see a single thing on it. So I want to know like what they're docking on, which is like, you're going to have to pay extra for that. A lot of people think it's like Beckett does it automatically. Beckett also grades cards without those subgrades. That oh, really? Just the common as yep. PSA. Yep. You have to pay an extra price to get those subgrades. Oh. Uh, so it, it's that's also an interesting piece too, because then like you have to hold the the like credibility of the company. Like, all right, are they giving me these subgrades, and are they potentially doing a pop control of the market, making sure like, hey, I think this, I'm gonna dock this to dock this. You yep. know what I mean? And and the credibility of the company is everything. It's a lot of power to put in the hands of a company, you know? Like, they could literally control a population, like... Well, there was always that scandal, you know, and talks about, uh, you know, a company that auctions cards and PSA and the connections between the two and how, you know, he was allowing altered cards and things to go through and get the high grades so that they could be sold for more. Yeah, was that, was that recently? Were. I did hear something about that. Yeah. Was that like, so, stock, I mean, like stock X app or something like that? No, no, no. Yeah. It was, uh, I believe, PWCC and oh, uh, yeah. PSA, somebody oh, okay. at uh, at the places. And, you know, it's it was always the big scandal of uh, whether that was something that was really happening or not. And since everything's done by people, you know, there's always you know, the human error. Exactly. And so it, it just kind of, uh, you know, adds that element where it's, can't be universal because you know we submit bulk and we submit 100 cards last time we did a, a submission of 227 cards mm -hmm. uh, or 127 cards it's like you know imagine you're the guy who's all day looking at you know 127 200 300 cards at a time you're gonna get tired your eyes are gonna get tired and then you know sometimes maybe you'll just let things go by yeah exactly uh, which i have know, seen so... like i've literally seen a base set zard that was like so off center that had a 10 and i'm like i don't understand like you like it was the a lot of them are from the older older right so days. now people are like does a certain number from uh you know does a two million cert number uh 10 is that less of a value than a you know four million cert number 10 um so people were trying to you know debate on you know certain numbers and whether certain certain numbers were um Value, should be valued less than yeah. others. Yeah, meaning so, like if you got a base set Charizard graded in 2010 uh, compared to now, potentially they would not get the same grade because it's hard to maintain that consistency, which they exactly. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting. All of this stuff is it's super interesting to me. It's almost like it's like it's like the stock market, man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a but, interesting. But to that point, it's like the stock market. So that's like people need to treat it like that, or they're going to end up getting really burned yeah big time exactly yeah man okay so what's this is a question that i've i figured people would love to know what is the most expensive like single item in each of you guys' collections <laughs> andrew you can go first what oh jeez i don't know i don't know like where to begin i think juicy should or... go first <laughs> so i it sucks because like uh, my most expensive stuff I end up selling just because <laughs> yeah. I continue to pump into the, I, I pump a lot into the, the channel as much as I possibly can. Yeah. And so like I recently just sold my Blaine's Charizard uh, PSA 10 first edition um, that I got not too long ago for about 40, like 4k. Um, I also just sold the first edition PSA 10 Dark Magneton not too long ago dude i saw that you had that psa 10 i was yeah. i was like damn because that one has a really low population right that's one of the hardest cards to grade it is and i wish i held on to it because at the time i did it right as everything started booming Ugh. so i only got 45 for it and people have it listed for like eight grand now damn um i, I have a couple charizards that are you know a few thousand dollars i opened up all my booster boxes i used to have a first edition fossil box um, that we opened up, um, but I opened up a lot of booster boxes. So I guess the most single card in my possession right now, from a card standpoint, will probably be one of my Charizards. It's... 
Which is always the Charizards. <laughs> yeah, I put a value on it about four grand is the one I got. And it's interesting that like, so the valuation of most booster boxes is basic is is like kind of going off of the fact that like, expecting that there's a Charizard. So you buy a you buy a base set booster box, and if you were to open it up and then didn't get the Charizard, like you lost a lot of that value. But it has to like, In the there, value kind of has to go. Yeah, oh yeah, me too, dude. I opened a base set box, a base set two, and a legendary collection, and I didn't get a single Charizard out of them. So I'm like, damn it. I have like two Charizards from when I was a kid that like I probably shoved in my pockets and got all that like one of like what my dog got to one of them it's actually hilarious I was, <laughs> I'm like looking back at it I'm like damn it my dog straight up ruined that card I was so upset at the time but now oh, that's so bad there was somebody oh, off off topic but there was somebody on Instagram that I was scrolling through that had his shining Charizard in a top loader from Hidden Fates and it was in his dog's mouth, and he was taking photos of it. I, like, freaked out. I'm oh like, what are you God. doing? <laughs> That's so crazy. These little pieces of cardboard, man. It's wild. Andrew, put me in the shame, man. Yeah, what you got, bro? We know Andrew's big baller. Well, put I me mean, in the shame, Andrew. Are we going to talk about single cards? Um, no, no, just tell him. Don't tell him about, don't tell him about the one thing. Okay, okay. So, oh. I mean, obviously, my booster box collection is probably top notch i think i have about 12 or 13 booster boxes ranging from like Jesus. legendary collections neo genesis first edition oh, yeah. um, you know fossil jungle things like that um there will be a huge announcement coming soon though yeah uh, I, a recent addition to my booster box collection Ooh. um probably will be my largest booster box purchase as of right now uh, and then for cards, I mean, you know, I picked up, uh, a, uh, I picked up, uh, <laughs> the, the one first edition, first edition, well, so first edition from Rusty, uh, ranging from six to eight PSA graded, uh, first edition base set hollows. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so, and in, in theirs, obviously I had bought a PSA seven, uh, first edition Charizard from Rusty. Um, and then I also have a PSA 10 first edition. I believe it's a Raichu in there. Very nice. um, this man could buy a house then, with all this cardboard. Yeah, oh. yeah, with all this cardboard, <laughs> I could buy a house. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, let's see, what's let's see, stuck at customs still and hopefully not lost is a first edition uh, Team Rocket Dragonite Error. Ooh, dude! When I found out about that error, I was sitting there and I like called my dad. I was like, Dad. You gotta go through my cards right now. Like I could have, cause I had like three or four of the dark dragonites, and I was like, please read the number at the bottom right. If you don't know, like essentially... I just want to say this though, Hayden. This is breaking news. Yes. Your podcast is the first first to hear that I hear uh, that he that. has this card coming. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so unfortunately, it's stuck at customs, and it's been there since July third, and I'm hoping that it's not lost at oh, customs. Dude. That's so scary, apparently, man. customs can hold a package for 45 days and then give you 45 days to uh, tell you whether you have to pay an additional fee or why they're seizing your product or whatever's coming in. Yeah, what the hell? Uh, I'm just, I'm just hoping that after 45 days, which should be some time, I'm assuming in the next two weeks should be the uh, end of the 45 day period. I'm hoping it gets released and on my way here. That's scary, man. I've heard so like. Uh... What's the dude? What's the dude's name? Leonhart has he got the first edition Zard that he sent into PSA and it got lost. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's like a fifty thousand dollar card, right? If, oh, more than that. If it's depending on what grade it gets. If it gets a ten, I mean, hell, PWCC had a nine point five Beckett sell for seventy three thousand dollars. Oh my last god! Last week. It's crazy to think like who is buying this? What kind of whales do we have in the Pokemon community? We can't let the rich people get figure this out too much, man. <laughs> But here's the thing. Like, see, this is where I know I'll probably get some backlash. I'm okay with individuals buying those extremely rare cards. Because overall, it's just going to add integrity and value to the entire community. And I don't think people understand the f true value in that. That means even though, hey, I may be an individual that might not be able to afford that type of card. But the cards I have 
are automatically going to increase in value that is true because of the popularity it's like buying a house in a particular neighborhood yep yeah, right? exactly if 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 businesses and, and like other things that come around it, it it adds to your property value right when someone of that stature when people of that stature come in and buy particular cards and so forth for that extravagant amount of money it's only going to add value to your cards yeah you it just legitimizes them. almost everybody like everything else like correct these people that come in like i've just seen a lot of people on twitter they're like actual investors that they're see like they're noticing this kind of uptick and it's like you're stupid to almost not jump on it like if you got into oh. this right as the whole covid thing went down like there was so much value to be made like yeah if you, you people just gotta unfortunately it, it, i think a lot of people just don't understand that type of stuff and i get where they're coming from but you gotta take your your you know the ideal way of like hey this is a bad thing and try to understand where people are coming from and take it out take it from away from the hobby in the sense of just like looking at it from a financial standpoint and a strategic standpoint yeah. like hey if something worth the value is going up in price and it's these particular cards this particular reason why but whatever it may be study it learn about it you know take advantage of it for yourself right exactly i get lost in a lot of a lot of videos doing some analytics and all this kind of thing oh yes. dude we do it every day every day. <laughs> but, but it's like you know people complain you know when you're when when collectors out there buy you know cards uh and pay exorbitant prices i mean that's the price that they're willing to pay to buy to get that card to add to their collection i mean if you're willing to pay ten thousand dollars for a single card i mean you know because you you really want it i mean you can't really blame the person for paying that much for the card that he yeah. really really wanted and i understand that it shifts the value and and people assume that that's the new norm price but i mean you really can't blame a person for buying a card because he really wants to have it in his collection. Yeah, it makes and, sense. It makes sense. You know, a lot of people get distracted from that and assume that these people are, you know, intentionally manipulating the market or, you know, trying to move the needle in a direction that's beneficial for them when they don't realize that for them it's 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 a piece that completes a collection or it's a card that they've always wanted to have but they could never get. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it, it's just that I wish people would take a look at it from not just assume that everybody is out there to, to raise prices, to flip cards because they're sitting on a whole bunch of them and they're intentionally trying to manipulate the market. Into, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's not, I mean, uh, it's not, you're, price, it's obviously right. not everybody. There's a lot of people who are, everybody has the reasons. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's just that I wish people would not give a lot of, you know, hate or, you know, to these people who are just adding things to their collection because, it's something that they've really wanted. True, you're right. All right, then bring all the whales into the into the community, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring them. <laughs> it's funny though when you were mentioning PSA earlier, and uh, we have between Andrew and I, we have almost 600 cards, and I have like all my own of just 200 and like 58 cards myself sitting at PSA. Yeah. So together we have like almost 600 cards just chilling there that are just waiting to be shipped back and it just they're so backlogged with so many people jumping into the community and getting stuff graded it's just it's an absolutely insane time right now yeah see psa so, has got the best business model they're making money just handling these things <laughs> like they must be making crazy money well, even now Beckett has uh, changed their pricing. So now, you know, their two-day submissions used to be fifty dollars a card. Now it's one hundred and twenty-five dollars a card. Um, and even their thirty-day service, they can't even guarantee that things will be done in the timely fashion. That that was normally their business model was: hey, if you get it sent in and they receive it on Friday, two days later, it's graded, it's done, it's encapsulated, and it's on its way to you. It's like their guarantee, like. Yeah. When they get it, it's, it starts that countdown, and that countdown is if it's 10 days, 5 days, 30 days, they hit it on the button. They give you a due date when it's done by, and they guarantee it'll be done by then. But now they've been so overwhelmed that, that they've had to increase pricing and give you know notices that things can't be done uh, in the time frame that, that, that they're outlining, and they'll do their best, but you know everyone's being overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah everything literally everything's overwhelmed at the moment it seems like yeah especially the freaking pokemon cards man so you guys have had you guys have had the channel running for over a year but have you guys 
pretty much been like collecting for like as long as the hobby's been going. Nope. Yeah. Um, I haven't. Uh, I collected as a, a young kid, and mm-hmm. then I traded all my cards for a N64. Nice. Um, and I had two binders full, and I had Charizards. I had, it, I had it all. Uh, but I traded it for an N64, and I recently just got back into it right around uh, when uh, Detective Pikachu came out. Nice. Okay, so yeah, that's recent. Yeah. Damn. And then for me, it was growing up was more Magic than Pokemon, I'd say, yeah. in, uh, for the card games. And then I knew of, of, of Pokemon because of the animation uh, on TV, so that's where I got it. And then I didn't get into Pokemon until right around the time I met Juice for the first time. Um, and we got into gaming, and then I found out he's into like Pokemon, so I followed him to the card shop, watched him do boxes of unbroken bonds and then i was like ah, oh, well you know what you know it's just kind of weird just sitting here so let me just uh, try some myself and then you know in a span of maybe uh, like a week or two i pull <laughs> two of the rainbow rare reshazards um in probably about 19 in within less than 19 booster boxes nice and then juice tells me he's opened up like 35 booster boxes worth of cards and Hell still couldn't you, you been one. with me. Oh my god. <laughs> I've opened up all these. <laughs> well, you yeah. opened up a lot more before probably yeah. before I started to sure. have, you know, come out with you, but Yeah, right when I first started the the channel over to Pokémon cuz I tried to do gaming and stuff like that and stuff that never never really took off. And uh, I was like, "You know what? I'm just going to open up Pokémon." You know, I saw the movie, I was super excited, so I started opening up a bunch of, like, Shiny Legends and Unbroken Bonds. Nice. And I opened up over 30 booster boxes. Jesus. Hell, the last time I opened up Unbroken Bonds, I got a case, because I'm like, dude, I just want to pull it myself. Never pulled it. Dude, and I didn't think like, the odds I, were that crazy. What? Dude, it's insane. I pulled plenty of... Well, here's the thing. It's not even that. So, like, Dude Luck, or, like, my other buddy that does stuff, within nine booster boxes, he pulled... Uh, Rainbow Zard from the same place I go to get my packs, and then Andrew, <laughs> watching me do this, he buys you know a bunch of booster boxes and pulls two himself. So those guys pull three from the same card shop, and I'm the you know the stupid you know uh, <laughs> dumbass that brings them with me, and they open up and, and get all three of the the fucking Charizards, and I was oh so my pissed. God. I was dude, so pissed, dude. Hate yeah, after it. pulling those two, it just got me into it, and then it just kind of snowballed into, hey, I remember this stuff as a kid, and then I started looking up vintage stuff, and I was like, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, this would be interesting to uh, to dabble in, um, and it just kind of took off from there. Yeah, Hell yeah. So you, so you still like collect magic and stuff, right? Do yeah, have... I do a lot of the more vintage magic and some of the more recent stuff. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I've picked up are stuff that I've found interesting and, you know, potentially uh, keep as an investment vehicle but, and but, hopefully in five but, to ten years. But we'll do you have a Black Lotus, Lotus, though? Um, Probably not. That'll be probably one of my ultimate goals. <laughs> yeah. That's like, like a PSA most... 10. I mean, you know, I think uh, Rusty recently picked up his... Uh, I think BGS graded, I believe it was a seven or an eight, or I forget. Yeah, I think but I saw that. I remember him telling us how much he was. He, it cost him, uh, you know, how long it, you know, yeah. it was just astronomical. So I don't know if that's something I'll be able to afford. <laughs> maybe one day. Yeah. For those who don't um, know, the, the Black Lotus is like recognized as the most expensive trading card like ever. The right. Alpha, I think it's uh, it's the. Uh, I think it's valued around a hundred thousand dollars. Dude, I know absolutely nothing about Magic: The Gathering, but I've still found myself watching people open those cards. I'm like, I don't even oh. know if that's good that that guy pulled that, but I'm like, I need to watch more. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's, a, Dude, it's all addicting, bro. There's literally something about like the sounds of packs opening that I'm like, I just, I need, I need more of that. It's like <laughs> it's just the thrill of the hunt, you know. <laughs> exactly like i've gone back and like watched my my videos of even me opening stuff and i'm like it still fires me up i'm like ooh, what did i get because <laughs> then, then i'm yeah, like looking at many prices. years later after you you, you know you exactly i had no idea about it, then you get back into it you're just like oh my god I, I remember that i did totally forget i was like thinking about it i remember someone on twitter like posted something about like a first edition rocket um 
card and I was like I think I have like 20 of those at home and then I was like I was like started going back to look at my videos and then I was looking at stuff on eBay and I was like dude these cards are in like pretty Insane. like they're per they're perfect condition and they're worth a lot if if they come back as tens I mean even nines they're like if they're not exactly perfect there's still definitely like crazy value in just getting them graded which is nice like, well it was just like uh, recently you know I just had to finally start clearing through my PSA collection and organizing everything and figuring out what I wanted to keep and what I didn't want to keep and you know things came up that I forgot that I had in my collection yeah you know, just sitting in uh -huh. boxes of, of stuff and, it's a cool hobby yeah. man it's fun to just go through and just kind of sort through things dude okay first off this jackass we're going through his stuff and he's like oh I have three PSA 10 uh, Arcanines from Sky Ridge. I'm like, oh, must be fucking nice, dude. <laughs> he, he just like, oh, here's like, another yeah. Charizard. Oh my oh, god. Oh, cool, cool, nice. All right. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I think, I, I, think I have like, I think I have like five, you know, like probably PSA nine base set Blastoises and you know this that. That you didn't even and, know. Nice. Yeah, I actually just like... got myself one of them bad boys and sent it in. I thought it was perfect, man. I'm I'm bummed out. It's a nine, but it's still nice. Oh, it's still, it's, it's still about, you know, uh, as tens become, you know, priced out for most people, nines and then eights, and eventually those will be, you know, moving up in value. So, yeah. you know, it'll just take a little time for everything to kind of reach its equilibrium point, I think. Yeah, true. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, it could, it could all go to crap one day and we'll just be sitting with useless cardboard <laughs> or it could be a million dollar investment. As long as no now. one wipes out all of the 90s kids, I think we'll be all right. Yeah. The 90s kids will always buy it. The well, nostalgia is there. Well, here, here, here's a good thing, too. Like, if you think about it, like, us 90 kids, we're going crazy right now with collectibles. I wonder, you know, th this is a, a thing that I think about a lot, too. Like, what about those individuals that grew up around the black and white era or the diamond and pearl era? Are yeah. they going to have this same nostalgia burst when they get to our age? And we'll see another surge of Pokemon? That is very true. Their, their items go up in an insane amount. Like, it, it, it's going to be, you know, time will tell. It's going to be interesting. But, I mean, by the time that happens, you know, it's going to be in the next 10 years. That's what the crazy thing about this is. Exactly. Like, all this stuff is so relatively new in the, in the aspect of collecting. It like, really is. Oakmont's brand new. It's 2000, really, right? Now, obviously, 99, yeah. 98, 99, when you know things started announcing and coming out and whatnot. But let's just say 2000, like turn of the century, like it, it's insane. Yeah, looking at the grand scale of things, it's like it's still relatively new, which is wild. And then if you look at anything else that's collectible, I mean, art, things like that. I mean, these are pennies compared to, you know, works of art. Oh yeah, I mean, exactly. you know, you have works of art in, the, yeah, like in the millions. Uh, and multi-million dollar art pieces and we're talking about cardboard that we think is expensive at 55,000 and, <laughs> yeah. and these art collectors will be like ha 55,000 you know for cardboard which, huh? which is crazy cardboard. if you think about it though because I mean a lot of art it's like one of one but like there's thousands of first edition Charizards out there you know and to, yep. the fact that they're still worth that kind of money is is but still but there's no crazy. black label Charizard first edition base set true there's not a single one huh there's not. Nope. Man, if, that's if just that Beckett. ever happens, I guarantee, I guarantee if there is one, and everybody hates the word guarantee. <laughs> everybody hates it. But I'm telling you right now, someone gets that first edition black label Charizard from base set, that bad boy is going to sell for over a million dollars. Like, it's literally worth it for people to have, like like, nines to just, like, send it in and just, like, try it. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, bust that baby open and give it a whirl. Yeah, yeah. give it, a, give it, a, give it a whirl. Test drive. That will be an happens. interesting day to see if that ever happens. Like, I mean, it's got to. Like, right? There can't not be because there's other black label first edition base set cards. The fact that there wouldn't be a Charizard is just stupid. Like, there, there's one out there. Eventually, there will be one. Like, I, I assume someone's got one, man. Someone's got one. So, do you guys? So, speaking of, you were talking about like black and white area and stuff like that. Have, did, are you guys? Have you ever been into the video games? I assume, obviously, as child, as kids, we always we all were. But have you guys kind of kept up with the video game aspect of Pokemon? Uh, for me, I I, I was I played the games I played the games more than anything as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. I I probably played those I don't know probably ten million times each. The classics. But 
but I mean, I really just got back into it with, uh, I played Sun and Moon for a little bit, uh, like th I think what, three years ago, four years ago, and then hop back on Let's Go and then Sword and Shield. And Thanks. then, like, I, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to make a team, and I'm going to whoop Hayden's ass. And I, never, <laughs> I never came around to actually getting it done. <laughs> there's a lot There's a lot, in, a lot you have to know, man. It's, it's a game of knowledge, for sure. It's, Dude, it's intense. It's intense. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like anybody can – like, it, it's, it's an interesting game compared to, like, a lot of other – like games compared like esports and things like that but it's literally like if the longer you play pokemon you literally it's you just have to know what everything does in like certain situations it's it's wild yeah, so i i remember playing the game as a as a child and then um now recently i've just gotten into like buying the sealed games so i recently picked up Ooh. a very minty 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 version of uh pokemon red oh damn that's a whole that's a whole different market that i've never even really like i've seen people collect like sealed games but those let's see i mean it all just comes down to like box quality at that point right yeah like, yeah, yeah. Right. and then uh and then i picked up from an auction a uh pokemon blue i mean it's not the like the greatest condition but you know it was inexpensive so picked that up to add to to the, my collection so um, for me, I mean, it's just another, it, it's kind of nostalgia, but then also kind of a investment avenue for me. Yeah. Kind of keep, uh, re as a childhood memento, remind me of the days I feel you. when it was, life was simple. It's working out well for you. Shit. Yeah. And so far, so good. You know, knock on wood, let's just hope it keeps going, uh, <laughs> in the right direction. So you guys obviously live close to each other, right? Oh yeah. Super close. Where, what, uh, what state are you guys from? Georgia? Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, I've always, I've always wondered. I was like, these guys got the, the joint channel going, which is pretty unique in its own. Like, there's not a lot of other people that are that are doing that kind of thing. You guys making it work. Yeah, I mean, it, we both have an understanding. Um, and the good, the really good thing is, I think we mesh well together because our personalities are so different. Yeah. Like, I am loud. I am aggressive right to the point <laughs> and andrew's cool calm and collective it's good and, to have a little bit of both yeah and, and like when it comes to things it's just from a business standpoint right because we treat it as a business it, it just works off each other right i have no no problems yeah you guys are so you guys have lately been i don't think you guys have been doing this for a while but i've noticed that you guys did a, a box break where you're able to um kind of offer up packs to viewers and then you open them on live stream Mm -hmm. Right, you did that with the Neo Box or something recently, right? Yeah, so we've yep. done it a few times. We did it with the first edition Neo Genesis that Dude Luck purchased, mm -hmm. um, and then we sold packs, and then he wanted to keep some, and then we still donated uh, eighteen hundred dollars to charity. Very nice. So it was pretty cool. Um, we've opened up, we sold packs for first edition Fossil. Uh, we sold packs. For, oh damn, you guys have done this a lot then. Yeah, base set two. Um, from a sense of selling, we've done three box breaks where we sold to the public, but we've also opened up first edition Team Rocket box. We opened up two jungle boxes. We opened up another first edition fossil box. Nice. We opened up like a base set box. See, that stuff's an interesting model, right? Because it's interesting for you guys because it's content for you, and obviously you're selling most of the packs at least. And it's interesting for like the consumer because there's not a lot of scenarios where you go on eBay and you buy a, a sealed pack of fossil. It, it's almost guaranteed that that thing is going to be weighed and it doesn't have a holographic in it, but you can pay the price to kind of have you guys open it, reserve a pack straight from the box. And it has as good of a chance as you're ever going to get to get, you know, a chance to have a holographic, which is like, I've watched those live streams. I know poker rev does them a lot and everybody in the comments is like, way overpriced but it's like you've got to think about the fact that you're getting a chance that isn't that doesn't come by very often being able to just grab a pack straight from a, a sealed box and having that chance to be able to pull the charizard like it's all a gamble and i think that's why i'm like always interested in like especially the videos i'm like deep down yeah. like gambling addict i'm like ooh. 
Oh, it could be a Charizard in that one. <laughs> I'm looking at two people right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it's expensive as shit to buy a sealed pack. And if you end up getting a, a non holo rare out of it, obviously you lost money. But there's always that chance. And it's not it's not bad odds. <laughs> no. Yeah, people always say like, oh, why don't you just buy the card that you want? Yeah, we could do that. Sure. But I mean, where's the fun in that? <laughs> I mean, the whole point is to open the pack. Like, flip through the cards and then see that card that you've always wanted to pull and you just pulled it. That feeling, you know, you, you can't put a price on that feeling or, you know, put it, can't really describe it. It's just right. amazing. Exactly. And for, for those individuals, because, you know, I get where those individuals are coming from where they, they complain or make one off comments saying, like, this is too expensive. But that's where, like, time and the research goes into it. Like, every single day you're in a hobby that continuously changes prices continue to increase almost hourly it's crazy and when you're looking at a potential booster box break as the person that's breaking that box you have to say okay i paid x amount for this box and for me to replace it it's going to cost me x amount yep exactly what are they going for now you can't just go to Walmart and pick up a Wizard of the Coast booster box anymore. <laughs> so if I open up a first edition Neo Genesis box, right? What we did, that box on eBay right now is twenty three to twenty eight thousand dollars, right? Jesus. When we open that box at that time, those were the only two boxes available for that price. And we opened that box, and by the time packs were sold out of it, we broke even. Yeah. 19 grand we didn't even make enough to replace that box which is insane which and you know people are like oh they're making profit they're doing this no it's not that crazy it, it, it's it's not as successful as you think it is like yes if you had boxes from years ago sure you're probably making money but you're selling at yeah. the the rate that it's going for now and you're probably selling it for a little less but if you're open up booster boxes right now no one's giving anybody a break you're paying, you know, whatever, depending on the set, you're paying on whatever that set is currently going for. And in order for you to replace that box, you have to pay that same amount, if not more, because now you open up that box. So now that box is going to be worth even more because they're like, hey, less on the market. Yeah, especially, and especially now, like the way things are going, man, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. So you guys, you guys have had uh, a new, new little website launch, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We uh, we have lootboxtv.com. Um, Shout out it, to the site. Yeah, woo woo. Um, <laughs> it, it's a collective. It it's a mix of all our ideas that we want to do with Lootbox TV into one. Obviously, we're showcasing what we do on YouTube. Um, we're also highlighting members of the community. Um, so every single month, every thirty to forty-five days, we update the website to highlight three different. Um, creators in the community just to help them out as well give them a free little you know shout out things like that on the home page of our website and then we also have an area where you can buy items so we have when we get a bunch of the PSA cards and unique items like that we're going to be putting them up on the store so individuals can come and purchase those those products off of us and don't have to worry about ebay and things like that they could purchase straight from us like a general like a like a store and then anytime we do have box breaks you can buy the packs right off the website yeah that's what um, made me think about it because i was like that was where you were where you were selling the the box break stuff it, yeah and uh it, it, it's it's working it's doing really well there's also one unique element that we're adding that we're probably going to be focusing a lot on have you ever heard of the players tribune in sports i have a little bit like i kind of so the 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 players tribune and i think i actually talked to you about this the 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 players tribune is a website for athletes to go and write about their experience in their relative sport mm -hmm. and it, it, it's a place where they can go they can share with the world whatever they want about you know the sport they're in the topics and how they feel about it whatever it may be as long as it's about that sport we're doing the same concept in a sense with pokemon um and, and really anything nerdy because we're expanding a little bit but Hell yeah any creator out there can come and say like they always want to write about their experience or just get something off their chest or whatever it may be 
they have the the privilege of coming to the site, writing it, right? And we'll we're going to promote the website and so forth, and push traffic to it, and they get to share, you know, what they want um, about the topic, and it, they that way they don't have to worry about their own blog website or anything. They could just come and write, and so be it. And we get to share it to the world and share their experience and so forth. So that that's a unique little area of the website that we're we're pushing out pretty quickly, um, and that. It's probably gonna get a lot of uh, exposure. I dig uh, it, man. It's a it's a really cool idea. Appreciate it. Appreciate Very it. Very nice. Would right. would love to hear about your competitive uh, the competitive scene. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll have to I'll have to hop on there for sure. Yeah, I would definitely love to get uh, you know your your experiences and your your thoughts and experiences in Absolutely, that competitive yeah. scene. I've been doing it for like ten years, so I got a lot to say. <laughs> I've been on I've been on this website for ten years, freaking oh. YouTube for too long, man. That's great. That's great. <laughs> well, listen, boys. It looks like we ran out of running out of time here. We hit that hit that hour mark. It flies by. I could literally talk about Pokemon cards all day because I literally have no one to talk about this with. I like I try I get my roommates into it. I'm like, yo, come check this shit out. I got like all my cards out. But it's cool to be able to talk to you guys, and especially since I've uh, I've been watching your guys' videos a lot. But I want to thank you for hopping on. This has been very fun. And we definitely got to do it again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having us. Of course. You guys can definitely check out Lootbox TV. The channel will be in the description, as always. And uh, go give these guys a follow and leave a comment on their video saying that I sent you. So, all right. We will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment telling me who you'd like to see on the podcast next. And maybe it'll happen. All right, guys. Peace out.